Hi, my name is Eric Clavoon with VIEW. VIEW manufactures dynamic glass. It's electronically tintable glass based on electrochromic technology. What dynamic glass enables is facades on buildings that can be clear from any obstructions like blinds or shades. So it has the ability to cut glare or eliminate glare for occupants, control the temperature or the heat that's coming from the sun into the space, all while being energy efficient. Um, up until now, we use low E glass and blinds and shades to achieve this. Um, and this is a revolutionary experience for occupants in that no longer do you need to obstruct your view by putting any blinds and shades in front of the glass. You can do that free. So we're really revolutionary, revolutionizing the way that occupants will view the outdoors while still being energy efficient. So what you're seeing here on the sample is a sample of our dynamic glass. Uh, our glass is an insulating glass unit, which means it's two panes of glass, argon in the middle, and the electrochromic layer is deposited on the inside surface of one of those pieces of glass. With a couple of volts of electricity, or voltage, it activates that coating to make the tinting occur, can, can change that transmission from completely clear to completely tint, and also states in between. So the product actually has four states of tint to control daylighting and glare while controlling that heat load. This is a thin film coating that's deposited directly onto the glass. It's about one micron thick overall and about five discrete layers that make that up. It's basically changing the polarity of the couple of volts. So when you go negative voltage, it tints one direction. When you go positive volts, it pushes the other direction. And what's actually happening is we're taking voltage across two conductors at the very edge of the glass. It's transmitting that voltage across the two panes of glass. And depending on if it's plus or negative voltage, it's pushing ions this direction in the coating. And that ion transfer is what creates an oxidation or reduction of that coating, thus changing the optical properties of the glass. The glass can be operated in two separate ways. It can be manually controlled with wall switches, mounted wall switches, or applications on your mobile device. Or it can be controlled automatically through what we call intelligence. And intelligence calculates the sun angles relative to the facade or every single pane of glass and eliminates glare for occupants through uh, geometry of where those gla gla glare angles are coming from. Um, and then second, it looks at impinging radiation onto that facade and can limit how much energy is coming through the glass at any time and step through the different tint levels in order to limit how much energy is coming in. And that's where you get the energy efficiency from this technology. There's four key requirements that make this a viable product for the industry. One is the performance, which is the tint range, the energy efficiency, the absorption of the visible IR and UV spectra that we talked about. Um, the second one is scale. So how big can I make the glass? People don't typically design buildings with glass that's you know, a square foot or even of this size. It requires larger size. Um, durability, uh, one doesn't want to sacrifice the durability or longevity of this product in order to get the technology. So it's important to have very good durability of this new technology. And then finally, price. It needs to be at a price which holds its value um, and not just something that you put into some really high-end application. That's not what we wanted. So we attacked these four areas. And to do so, you know, we were developing the technology on very small samples to validate its performance. But then we needed to look at achieving those other three areas. And that's what brought us to this facility in Silicon Valley, or specifically Milpitas, California. Um, we'll be taking a look at a pilot facility, which enabled us to scale from this size up to this size here, um, which gave us the scalability uh, feasibility that then we could go to five foot by 10 foot. And that's the maximum size that we're manufacturing in our Olive Branch, Mississippi facility that is up running and shipping product currently today. So as part of the scaling up development from the simple two inch samples, we were lucky enough to find this facility with this existing physical vapor deposition or sputtering piece of equipment. Um, this is an inline sputtering tool where you put a substrate in one end and as you progress through the tool, you can deposit different layers by PVD or sputtering. And then at the end, it comes out with the layer of the thin film, typically about a micron thick, on the glass. 
and this was used uh, before we came here for a different industry. And what's neat about these tools is it's a great R&D tool because we could repurpose it to deposit it on glass as well as change the materials to suit these inorganic metal oxide materials that we're depositing onto the glass for our technology. So what you're looking at here is about a uh, 100 feet long of sputtering tool where each one of these chambers or modules can be configured for different heating, cooling, or deposition steps. Just like in any thin film uh, deposition process, you're not only making an optical layer on this glass, but you're making an electronic device. Um, so it's, as, as the single layers are very important of what we're depositing, it's the secret sauce is the integration. How do those multiple layers come, come and form an electrical device? And that's where all the secret sauce and the development is. We're already working on next generation devices in this R&D facility while we've taken what we developed a while back here, and that's what's running in manufacturing in, in all of France, Mississippi. Well, after the single piece of glass is coated with the technology like we just looked at, we then form it up into an insulating glass unit. And what that is is just like a low E glass unit in in today's buildings is two panes of glass separated and filled with argon between the two for its thermal insulating properties. Um, there's a spacer, a silicone sealant on the edge, and then out comes the uh, low voltage pigtail that actually activates that coating. So this is what the finished insulating glass unit uh, sample looks like. Um, and then we do quite a bit of metrology so that we can understand the properties of the glass and how it's performing. And to do so, um, we do things like transmission measurements where, for instance, this is measuring uh, wavelengths in the visible light spectrum, um, and we can map that all the way through the infrared where you have uh, a source, uh, a light source and a light receiver, and as we transition this glass, we can map out its properties of its transmission range um, and switching characteristics. This is the load unload area of the coder, and uh, it's very important to have a clean substrate in many deposition processes, not just dynamic glass, but uh, certainly for dynamic glass as well. So cleaning the substrate, then after it's cleaned, being in a clean room environment is what we're seeing back here. Um, and then the glass being loaded into carriers, which then will then go into that vacuum deposition system. To validate the energy performance, as well as uh, do occupant studies, VIEW built out two demonstration rooms. Uh, what's behind me here are two side-by-side -side identical rooms uh, constructed like a executive office. Um, one room is built out with high-performance low-E glass with blinds, so traditional uh, building architecture. And this room is exactly the same room except dynamic glass minus the low-E glass minus the blinds and shades. These rooms have now been operational for more than a year. So what's actually showing here on the dashboard is one uh, annual season where you go through uh, summer and winter months as well as the shoulder months. You understand what the savings are and we've collected uh, annual data that shows a 39% energy savings between uh, dynamic glass and the low E room. Um, now that we have the annual data, what we're doing are occupant studies. So we have people come in these spaces, um, live the experience as the glass is using its intelligence to automate the tint levels when they want to manually override. So we're learning from that to revise our algorithms and we're collecting online data surveys from the occupants so that we can then also not only validate the energy savings but also the occupants experience. Today we've taken a look at what enabled development and pilot scale for VIEW. Um, that enabled us the feasibility to capitalize and build out a manufacturing facility in Olive Branch, Mississippi. And that's where we've reached our full scale production, which are 5 foot by 10 foot uh, architectural glass. We're selling that into the commercial industry, into applications in uh, hospitality, in healthcare, and commercial office space are some of those key points. Project size and adoption, uh, project sizes are only getting larger. So we have done the largest dynamic glass installations to date. And again, the projects keep getting larger and larger.